the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, please be seated. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and without Him not one thing came into being. These epic words from the prologue of John's Gospel, given to us this, the first Sunday after Christmas, given to us every year, on the first Sunday after Christmas. Now mind you, even though Santa's gone from Walmart and the mall, did Santa even ever make it to Richmond Fashion Mall this year? I don't know, right? But Santa's gone, Christmas music is over, but Christmas continues. It continues to the feast of the Epiphany next Saturday. Twelve full days of Christmas celebration and joy. And yet, here in the middle of Christmas, we get this curious reading from John. No babies, no manger, no sheep and cows standing by, no angels, no shepherds, no wise men. Just this poem about the eternal Word of God, Jesus himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God, and without him not one thing came into being. The poem, John's words, describe the dance between Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The fancy church word they use to describe it is the charismatic dance. Isn't that beautiful sound? And it is beautiful because in it we see God the Father who loves God the Son, who loves God the Spirit, who loves God the Father. And the three of them bound up together in love. One perfect, eternal, undivided trinity in unity. Three in one. And together they move and they dance. And then John says, in the beginning was the Word. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit always was doing this dance since before time. And when time ends someday, there they will be, dancing together, bound together in love. And the Word was with God. Now usually when you talk about being with someone, it's like, come for a ride with me in my truck. And you're going to sit there, and I'm going to sit there, and we're going to go down the highway together somewhere, right? And there we are together going. But here, the word with in Greek means more than that. Because yes, God the Father is with God the Son, and God the Son is with God the Holy Spirit, like riding in the truck together. But they are together also in a much more meaningful and powerful way. Because it's talking about God the Son. The eternal word always moving towards the Father, and the Father always moving towards the Son, and the two of them always moving towards the Holy Spirit, so that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in that beautiful charismatic dance together, are drawing ever closer to one another. Every moment as they dance, they are bound up more together in love perfection and unity. And then Christmas comes. Christmas is the feast of what in the church year? Well, the two deacons don't get to answer this because they probably know, right? But what do we call Christmas? It's the feast of the... No. It's not even the preface of the nativity, right? Pull out your prayer books. <laughs> they always do. 
let's go to the colic of the day for today, which is going to be on page 213. Now, on 2.13, we see the colic for the first Sunday after Christmas. That's today. And just before it, we see the colics. There are three of them because there are three services you can technically do for Christmas Day. Um, just above it. What is the preface? That's the special little prayer that goes into the Eucharistic prayer that you say for the first Sunday after Christmas. <coughs> Thank you, Julie. Someone's paying attention, right? It's the preface for the incarnation. Christmas is the celebration, not of the nativity. A baby being born is exciting. But it's not all that unusual or weird, is it? Babies get born all the time. But God became flesh one time. The incarnation, the enfleshment of God is what happens at Christmas. That is what we celebrate and are joyful about. And so in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was ever moving towards God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And as John says, and the Word became flesh. It was incarnated and dwelt among us. And in that incarnation, we are given power to become God's sons and daughters forever. And you are invited into the dance. You are invited into the dance with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Such that you are to be bound up in God's love. And every day, as you dance with God, to be drawn more and more into God's life, to be bound up in his love and protection, and to become more like God. Christmas is about that incarnation and about that dance that John is talking about, and about God being drawn closer together as a trinity, but inviting you and his church into that dance so that we might be bound closer together as his people here on earth, scattered throughout time and space, and that we might be drawn closer together with him. So you've all had a good Christmas, I hope, with lots of fun and festivities and gift-giving. But what will you do with that invitation? The invitation to the dance. Will you come and dance with God? Will you structure your life this year such that you are regularly praying with God? Joyce Pott can tell you about services in the prayer book to help you do this. They're called, what are they called, Joyce? Daily office. The daily office, morning and evening prayer. You've probably heard me mention these before, right? Yes. A couple of times. I'll stop talking about them when I know you're all doing them, That's right? You laugh, but I'm not joking, because they're that important, because the daily office, that daily time of prayer is part of how you get invited to the dance and accept that invitation. So are you saying your prayers? Are you reading your scripture? When someone in the body of Christ harms you or upsets you, are you with them? Are you being drawn ever closer to them in the love of God? Jesus came to earth and joined earth to heaven and heaven to earth so that you can be invited into that dance. Will you dance with God? Amen. Amen. My brothers, my 